What's going on, guys? We are in the heart of the NFL offseason, but our coverage here at New York Giants now by Chat Sports is not slowing down. We are going to continue to put out videos every single day. And if the Giants make a move, if they trade for someone or sign someone, I promise you we're breaking it down. So go down right now, hit that big red button, subscribe, help us get to 10,000 subscribers. Look, if you love the Giants, do it for Eli. Go down right now, hit that big red button. Welcome in to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And in today's show, we've got some trade rumors to break down because our friends over at Bleacher Report, they put out an article highlighting one trade every single NFL team should make before the 2022 NFL season and the New York football Giants. They were mentioned not once, not twice, not three times, but four different times for trade. So we're going to break them all down, but let's start with the first one that I thought was the most ludicrous of them all, to be honest. And it was Kenny Galladay. There were two Kenny Galladay trades. We'll show those back to back. The first one, the Baltimore Ravens, they called up Joe Shane and said, hey, let us get Kenny Galladay for Nick Boyle and a 2023 six round pick. That was the first one for Kenny Galladay. And the Chicago Bears, they wanted Kenny Galladay as well. For a guy that didn't score any touchdowns last year, it sure seems like a lot of teams are interested in him, even though they're only offering six-round picks like the Chicago Bears are in this trade. And it would just be a straight-up swap, a six-round pick for Kenny Galladay. No Nick Boyle this time. I guess Nick Boyle really moved the meter for the Baltimore Ravens. But let's talk about like the financials of what a trade would look like for the Giants and the repercussions of trading away Kenny Galladay. Right now, Galladay has a 20, a uh, excuse me, a 21 and a half million dollar cap hit for the 2022 NFL season. And if the Giants were to trade him, they would carry almost an eight million dollar dead cap dead cap hit without him on the roster for the 2022 NFL season. They would also have a 10.2 million dollar dead cap hit next year. While they would save 13 point million dollars this year, they would also save 11.2 million dollars next year so of course trading Galladay it's going to save a little bit of money but is that money really enough to trade on Galladay and only get back a six round pick in my opinion it doesn't really make all that much sense I mean Galladay of course didn't have a great season last year just 37 grabs 521 yards 14.1 yards per catch and of course the goose egg when it comes to touchdowns but I still have hope because when I go back and watch the highlights of the 2019 season where he led the NFL in receiving touchdowns with 11, and he also had nearly 1,200 yards and had 18.3 yards per catch and 65 grabs. I think that's the receiver, or I'll put it like this. I think that Kenny Galladay is closer to the actual version of Kenny Galladay now than what we saw in 2021. I still think he can stretch the field. I think in this Brian Dable and Mike Kafka offense, Galladay is going to be able to really show Giants fans the type of receiver he is and why the Giants paid a lot of money for him because they're going to ask him, to be wide receiver one this year. Because Sterling Shepard, he may not be ready for week one. Kadarius Toney, as much as I love him and as much as I want him to be great, because he can be. We've watched the tape. We know what he can be. I don't know if I'm ready to depend on him, but he can be wide receiver two. I like Wandale Robinson a lot. I don't know if he's ready to be wide receiver two. Darius Slayton might not make this roster. C.J. Board, he's a special teams specialist. Richie James impressed him at minicamp. But is he ready to be a big dog? Kenny Galladay has to show himself. Giants fans, Daniel Jones, Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, and Joe Shane, that he can be the real deal. Because if not, the Giants could easily move on from him after the season, cut bait, and not have really any salary cap implications. But I'll ask you this question. We, so, we showed you two trades. The trade uh, market is a six-round pick and a third-string tight end. So no, I would not trade Kenny Galladay. I'd hold on to him, let him work with Daniel Jones, let Daniel Jones have a real wide receiver one to work with in his last season. But this show's not all about me. That's why we're called Chat Sports, because we like to start conversations. So let me know, would you trade Kenny Galladay? Type T for trade, or you can go down and type P for pass. Trade idea number three circles around somebody that we've talked all too much about when it comes to Giants trade rumors, and that's Saquon Barkley, number 26, the former number two overall pick. The Chiefs, they would acquire Saquon Barkley. Remember, all these trades came from Bleacher Report. And the Giants, they would receive Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and a 2023 fourth-round pick. This one on the surface is much more, it makes more sense. As a Giants fan, I wouldn't hate myself or Joe Shane for making this trade. I understand why you would trade Saquon Barkley. And we'll talk about him in a second. But let's focus in on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. 
And look at the type of player he's been in the past two seasons. In the first two seasons of his NFL career after he was a first-round selection <clears throat> out of LSU in the first round. He had 181 carries his rookie year, 803 rushing yards, 36 reception, receptions, and almost 300 receiving yards. Five total touchdowns. This next year, he took a little bit of a step back on the ground. Had less carries, less yards, less receptions, less receiving yards. Also had six uh, receiving touchdowns. We'll talk more about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in this trade in a second. But first, I just want to gauge the audience. Something we were talking about in the office today. In my opinion, if you have an Android in 2022, you're probably a cop. Your Twitter is probably on day mode. But let me know. What are you rocking with? What phone do you have in your pocket? Or are you watching this video on right now? If you're using an Android, type A for Android. If you're like me and you're rocking with an iPhone, team iPhone, you can go down in the comment section and type I. In my opinion, the window to trade Barkley is currently closed. The time and place to do that was either before NFL free agency when you would have cleared uh, $7.2 million in cap space or right before the NFL draft so you could have got some draft compensation. But the window is not officially closed. It does open back up, and it will open back up before the NFL trade deadline. If Saquon Barkley is having a good year and Joe Shane doesn't feel like offering Saquon Barkley a lot of money going forward and a contract extension by re-signing him, then you would look to trade him at the NFL trade deadline. But let's just focus on the player that Saquon is. He had one of the best rookie seasons a running back has had in recent memory, where he went over 2,000 all-purpose yards, had 15 total touchdowns, averaged five yards a pop, had 91 receptions from check down Eli Manning. But the next 28 games, he really wasn't the same player, where his stats were down all across the board. Rushing yards, down. Yards per tote, down. Total touchdowns, down. Receptions, up a little bit, but he also played 12 more games in that sample size. We know Saquon Barkley can be great, but it's time for him to put it all together and put the pressure on Joe Shane. Because if Saquon Barkley balls out this year, Joe Shane is going to have to make a tough decision. Does he allocate resources and dollars to Saquon Barkley to build around him, or does he move forward and the Giants cut bait with Saquon Barkley? It's going to be an interesting season. Saquon's going to be able to control his own destiny. As an athlete, sometimes that's all you can ask for. Control what you can control. And if he wants to be a New York Giant for the future, he's going to have to play like it and play like the beast he was in his rookie season. But I'll ask all Giants fans to predict the future for me right now. Will Saquon Barkley be on the Giants in 2023? Not the 2022 season. After this season, will the Giants re-sign him? Let me know. Type Y for yes, or if you think he's gone, you can go down in the comment section and type N for no. Here at Chat Sports, we don't just cover the Giants. We cover everything, the NFL and the NBA, and we're going live for the 2022 NBA Draft this Thursday, June 23rd, two hours before ESPN goes live. We'll be live taking shots, slugging beers, breaking down every single pick, my guy Harrison Graham and Chase Sr., they'll be breaking it all down. So join us over there. My guy Sam Brown, he's going to be producing, pushing the ones and twos, best producer in the game. Go subscribe, youtube.com slash chat sports. We just crossed over 300,000 subscribers over there, and we are continuing the coverage. It's going to be awesome. The NBA draft's fun. Watch it with us over at youtube.com slash chat sports TV. We'll check out the last trade idea from Bleacher Report right now. This one, the Giants actually, I think, would maybe do this trade. I think it makes a little bit more sense than the other two trades because, look, this helps a position of need, cornerback. That's a thin area for the Giants right now. They would be receiving Jonathan Jones from the New England Patriots and shipping off the sixth-round pick in next year's NFL draft. My only problem with this is that the Giants would also having be having to pay him $6 million, and the Giants don't necessarily need help in the slot. They need help on the outside. And when you look at this Giants cornerback depth chart, that's where you can see this team needs help. Aaron Robinson is not ready to be a full-time starting outside cornerback, in my opinion, in the NFL. I love him in the slot. Second year, he's a good player, has strong hands, good when he gets his hands on you, plays bigger than he is. I like him in the slot. I have questions about the outside corner spot. He'll have to prove it to me. But in the slot with Darnay Holmes and Cordell Flott, who you just selected early in the NFL draft in 2022, you're okay there. But I'm not ready to depend on Aaron Robinson, Radarius Williams, Michael Jaquette, or Maurice Kennedy to be the outside corners for the New York Giants. So when you look at this trade, 
it makes some sense. The Giants, they would get Jonathan Jones, a player who is a good corner in the NFL. He's established, but he's mainly played in the slot. Doesn't mean he can't play outside. I'm sure he can. But the Giants would also be giving up a future six-round pick. If I had to say so, I would decline this trade. But I'll leave it up to you, Giants fans. Who do you think would actually be the winner of this deal? Would it be the Giants because they get Jonathan Jones, a dependable corner in the NFL? Or would it be Bill Belichick and those New England Patriots because they get a Giants six-round draft pick in 2023? Type NYG if you think the Giants are winners of the trade or any for the New England Patriots if you think they win this trade. I appreciate everybody that's made New York Giants now a part of their day today. You're a real one. I know all the real ones that always watch these videos. And if you haven't yet, maybe you're a new person to New York Giants now. Show me some love over on Twitter at MarshallGreen underscore. I'm tweeting about the Giants all day, every day. So hit me up. Give me a follow. And if you give me a send me a DM, let me know you came from this video. I'll make sure to give you a follow back.